Ryan, how long have you been out on the streets? Uh, almost two months. Are you staying in tents or in a shelter? Um, I'm in tent right now. What's the worst thing that's happened to you so far? So far, um, I've none too bad. Mosquitoes and uh, the heat. What's the best thing that's happened to you? Um, people being generous and giving me things. There are some good people out there. Good. Has being in this situation, Ryan, caused you to pause and give any thoughts to the afterlife? Um, it's helped me pray a lot more, but not necessarily think about the afterlife. Do you ever think about the afterlife? Um, sometimes. I try not to, really, but sometimes. What are your thoughts on the afterlife? Um, well, the way the Bible puts it and everyone, and hell don't sound fun. Heaven's supposed to be um, the most, best thing you can imagine, more better than you can imagine. So you believe there's a heaven and a hell. Do you know with certainty to which one you're going? Um, I'm pretty certain I'm going to heaven. How do you know? Um, well, I've been saved. Um, I really don't do anything against him, really, that he don't like. Um, I'd ask for forgiveness most nights. I try to remember praying and ask for forgiveness. A lot of people I run into out here, Ryan, think that going to heaven has something to do with being a good person. What do you think? Um, not necessarily, but... It, I mean, it's still, you need to try to be a good person. Are you a good person? I think so, yeah. For me and you to be good people, or rather, to be righteous, what we would have to do is keep God's laws 100%, the Ten Commandments. I'll walk you through a few of them for illustration, and then get your thoughts on it. Can you handle it? Yes, sir. Ryan, have you ever told a lie or stolen anything in your life? Yes, sir. Used God's name as a cuss word? Yes, sir. Have you ever looked at a woman to lust for her? Yes, sir. The Lord says that even when we look with lust, we commit adultery with a woman in our heart because it's not only what we do, it's why we do what we do. Have you ever murdered anybody? No, sir. The Lord says that even when we call our brother a fool without a cause, it's a murderous heart. Have you been angry at someone and you cut them down with your words? Yes, sir. And here's your last one. Thank you for being patient. Have you ever disobeyed or dishonored your parents? Yes, sir. Ryan, we've only looked at half of his laws, and it's safe to say that you, like me, have broken them, and we have a debt to God's law, and all debts have to be satisfied. Ryan, do you know what capital punishment means? Um, kind of. Where a judge sentences a criminal to death for their crimes? Yes, sir. Did you know God has sentenced me and you to death for our sins? Um... No, not like that, not necessarily. The scriptures say, for the wages of sin is death. And as is appointed unto men wants to die, but after this, the judgment. So if you and I were to die one day and then meet God in judgment and he judged you by the commandments standard, would he find you then innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Um, I I, I still, as long as I ask for, for forgiveness um, after I, I, heaven, I guess, right? Okay, let's explore asking for forgiveness. Ryan, I'm going to bring you into a courtroom scenario. For example, Ryan says, hey, judge, you've got me. I've robbed the bank. I'm guilty. Will you forgive me, judge? What's he going to tell you? No. Time or a payment. So do you see why simply asking for forgiveness is not how we get it? Yes, sir. So to avoid going to hell, which is like God's prison, to do the time for the crime, what you and I would need in God's courtroom is a payment. Do you know where you'll find a payment for your sins in God's courtroom? Um, helping others and finding, helping them to find God. That's a good thing that a Christian should do, and I wish more Christians did that. But that wouldn't work either to satisfy the debt. Once again, for example, that's like Ryan saying, hey, judge, you've got me, I've robbed the bank, but since then I've helped 10 little ladies cross the street. He's gonna say, so what? You already did it and you're good, don't outweigh your bad. That's not how justice works. Time or a payment. Do you understand this? Yes, sir. Let's explore the payment. 
According to the scriptures, God is a spirit, and he entered into his creation as a man, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. And the reason he did that was to write a check just for you in his blood when he died for you at the cross. And the last words that he said before dying were, it is finished, as in paid in full. Ryan, if he died to pay for 100% of your sins in blood, how many sins would you have left to pay for in hell? Um, zero. Zero. So you better take the payment. So Jesus died on the cross for you, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures, and he's alive right now. And what you and I must do to find forgiveness and eternal life is in your heart, agree with God that you're guilty, that you've sinned. And instead of trusting in anything you do, such as asking for forgiveness, changing your ways, and even helping other people, rather, trust alone in the blood that was shed for you to pay for it. Do you see the difference? Yes, sir. In the book of Romans chapter 10, the Lord says, if you'll believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll believe unto righteousness. And with your mouth, confession is made of Jesus Christ unto salvation, that all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ryan, we took a moment and walked through the scriptures. What are your thoughts about that? Um, well, before I was feeling like I had to um, keep asking for forgiveness to be forgiven, and now I understand that it's already been paid and I don't have to keep asking for forgiveness. It's already been paid as long as I believe with all my heart that it's been paid for. Ryan, my prayer cannot save you. Your own prayer can't save you if in fact you don't believe that he's already paid for your sins. But if you do, in the silence of your heart, would you be willing to speak to the Lord and tell him, I accept? Let me take a moment and pray out loud for you, but you get your account settled in your own heart between you and the Lord. Can you handle that? Father, thanks so much for an opportunity to serve you, to be a mouthpiece for you. Amen. Ryan, if you were to die today and stood outside of heaven and God says, why should I let you in? What would you say? I would tell him that you sacrifice your son and he, he sacrificed um, his sins for, for everyone. And that if I believe, I believe in your son and that he died for me. And I believe that was on my heart. Has the Lord spoke to your heart during this conversation? Yes, sir. What is that like? Um, it's hard to explain. It's, you just get a feeling in your chest and in your heart, a little light feeling. Perhaps he took your sin right off your shoulders and gave you some peace. Yes, sir. Maybe. 